Okay, so I'm Matt Lighty, and this video is going to be telling you how I run my blighted maps and how you could do blighted maps and what's what the fuck's up with blighted maps. So blighted map, this is the oil tab. It shows your oils and shows your blighted maps. These are blighted maps, and we run these uh, because we want to get blight uniques, and they have a lot of goodies in them. Now, this is a basic white blighted map. This is a, uh, you know, it's a it's tier, tier 6, and what I always do is I make it I chisel up the quality, and then I alk it. And it doesn't have uh, reflector, no regen, so I'm good to go. And then I anoint it. So anoints are used um, on various parts of your gear. Your amulets have anoints. They have anoints, as you can see, for utmost swiftness. This gives you something in the tree. Your ring anoints are affecting the towers you have. The towers you build has a lot of different ring anoints. It depends on what towers you want to use. There is no correct answer for what is the best tower to use. Uh, there are a bunch of good towers, and they recently buffed them all as of last patch. And you could legit use fucking any of them and just have a lot of them and you're pretty much good to go. But there are some that I prefer. And these are the Arc Tower. I like having the Arc repeats an additional time on the Arc Tower. That one's pretty sick. Fireball Tower with the multiple projectiles in a circle. That one's hilarious. Freeze Bolt Tower, uh, firing extra projectiles and dealing cold damage enemies. You can't have two anoints. You can't have one anoint on one ring and one anoint in the second ring. I don't even have my second ring anointed. I should probably do that right now. I'm gonna go with Arc Tower. So I wanna do uh, that same shit again. They just stack up, so silver and a clear. I don't have any silvers. I'm gonna make a silver. Silver, clear, arc tower repeats again. Bam, all right, I got my arc towers repeating two additional times, they do stack up. The map itself I gotta put oils on, because I wanna make it a little bit better. Now maps have two stages when it comes to the loot. You, when you clear the map, you're gonna have the different little channels, like chests will spawn. That's one type of loot. That isn't affected by anything on your map as far as what, like, you know, whatever as far as quantity and rarity. What is affected by quantity and rarity is the amount of shit that explodes out when the map is complete. So just keep that in mind when you're crafting maps. You can't just write, run a map white and it won't have any bearing on your chest if you just wanna make it more difficult for yourself. Now bladed maps can have a different types of annoyance that do different things. The easiest one, if you're not good at doing blight maps, is putting on amber oils. This reduces the building cost and upgrade cost by a metric ton, and it makes it so much easier. Uh, if you want to actually give yourself the budget version of like good loot, lucky chests. Um, this has two blight chests become lucky, and these all stack up three times. Right? You can do three different anoints. So you know you can do three different oils. So uh, three teals equals six blight chests are lucky. Got a lot of different options here. You can do the towers do more damage. You can do uh, quantity, whatever. This one affects the pump, so if you have three violets, that means 90% quantity for the explosion at the end. It's a big explosion. The the best layout for the budget version is two crimsons and a black. That means six lucky chests and there's a 10% chance to drop additional rewards. That's like the best best version. Now you can get goldens for you know 25% or you know lucky chest, five luckies from silver, but your best bang for your buck is two crimsons, one black, or three teals is the budget version, or if you're having a shit time, just put on three ambers. For this one, I'm just gonna put on three ambers because I don't wanna have to pay attention and it doesn't make that much of a difference. And then you see in the highlighted 60% reduced cost of building. So I, my map is crafted, I've got my ring annoyance, I'm gonna be building arc towers and I'm good to go. You pop this bitch in your map device like normal, and uh, yeah, then we're, then we're off to the races. Okay, so here's your area, uh, here's your lady. Now, I, first thing I always do, honestly, is I always move my portal um, kind of closer to the initial pump, but not like on top of it. Now, once you click to the middle, this one minute timer starts ticking down. When that hits zero, the whole the things are gonna start to spawn, and you have, you have to survive for five minutes. These are the different types of things you're fighting. Some of them have elements, you know that specific mobs will come out. This one's gonna spawn lightning mobs, so I'll do a little bit less damage to them because I'm using lightning towers. Anything with a little circle above their head means a boss is gonna spawn out of that. And then this shows in the minimap, you always wanna keep your minimap up, it shows where the trail is going. So nothing is going to the right, everything's going to the left. And there's a thing spawning right there at the gate. And the one thing you wanna do is, the big part of this is using the empowering towers. You always wanna have empowering towers built around your thing. So I build by one empowering, I build a couple of these bad boys, and I'm gonna make some arc towers. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then that's just, that's one little cluster. The next cluster is over here, but these are gonna have to go that way. So I don't know, I'm just gonna hit start, which automatically starts it. Now we're off to the races. And I'm not even gonna bother clicking anything really. I'm just gonna let them do their thing. My minions might fuck with them, and if they do, that's annoying, but whatever. The arc towers are gonna take care of everything themselves. And you can hold tab, and you can't see the little red dots. But when you set up your ship properly, you don't really have to do anything. You kind of just kick back and relax. I mean, you'll have to get involved eventually, but it kind, of, it kind of takes care of itself. You don't have to build a tower in every single spot. You want to build towers where it's most economical. So kind of like over here, I built the towers around, but I only have to build one buff tower. I can build the rest of you know, arc towers. Not really bother there. 
Now it's split a bit much. Now we have a big concentrate area right here. So what I can do right here is I can build um, one buff tower right here, make it to level one and three. I don't want to upgrade anymore. I just want it right here. Now you can see the little circles underneath things. This means it's being affected by the buffer, all right? So now I want to build arc towers on these. So they're going to affect and uh, get buffed to their maximum potential and start zip zapping things. I'm trying to build a line of defense, which is like all this is a tower defense. A line of defense that is going to make sure no one gets the fuck past here. Okay, and then eventually, I don't want to use all my materials and then be totally bankrupt because eventually this is going to split down, which hasn't happened yet, but eventually it will split downwards. And when it does, I want to be prepared to have enough to afford to build a, a little similar setup down there. There's another arc tower. Okay, I haven't, I haven't had to actually attack anything yet. As you see, I'm using Dominating Blow. I haven't had to attack a single thing yet. So far, it's just been using the power of the arc tower. Now, one thing I can do is I could build a little tower over here to make it a little bit safer for me. So the, my favorite tower for this is the seismic tower, okay? Now I'm gonna build the seismic tower up for the, there's two options, stone and temporal. This is like a big slow field, but stone gaze stops bosses in their fucking tracks when buffed. It's buffed from this. This totally petrifies and stops bosses in their tracks. This is a big safety measure. Now this did split down, so we're gonna go down here if I want to. I see a boss popped up over here, but he's gonna just, uh, you know, follow the trail and be no problem whatsoever. He's getting shocked and he's going to be totally petrified. And there he is, frozen to death. He's never going to get to take another step, really. He'll get a little bit farther, but pretty much he's just stuck there forever. Um, which is very nice and safe. We're going to bing this thing up. Boop, bop. Okay, so we got a little defensive thing here. Now we're going to put one stone, one arc. Hopefully when this splits further, we'll get more arc towers going. So I'm going to have to concentrate on this area myself because there's not a lot of towers I can build here. Everything up here is pretty much A-OK -okay at this point. I could build more shock numbers if I want to, because why not? Well, let's, yeah, why not? We'll just build one more, just because for, for fun. Oh, we got some more towers, nice. Okay, let's build another shock over here. Get another arc going. Again, I haven't attacked once this entire, entire time, right? I've just been hanging out building towers. Because if you do blight towers properly, especially in indoor maps, it's extremely easy. Let's check on our progress down here. It's going pretty good. See, it's, this guy's trying to get through, but he's petrified. He's totally, totally petrified. This one might reach, maybe. Is he gonna? Nope, he's just done. All right. I mean, you get a boss up here, but again, watch the shock tower start going off. There's a lot of stuff spawning, so I'm actually gonna start attacking here a little bit here. Get a couple attacks in, clear the wave off if you have to. You know, minimal investment in my effort here. Um, I think the north is totally, totally fine. Yeah, they're they're good. How's it going the south? Get a couple hits in. I could build more towers, but honestly, what's the point? I, I've got everything locked down. You know, I've got my offensive shock towers and more over there. I got my defensive stone petrification towers, and uh, you know here's a boss. He's he's not even really going to make it very far. Blight maps are a very chill experience. The the one thing that sucks about them is they always take five minutes. There's no way getting around that. You can't speed up the fact this takes five minutes. You know you're just here. And some blight mobs are really scary damaging wise. This one not so much. And now as the timer's starting to tick down, you're going to start to see some of these little circles are going to start filling up with loot, meaning the channels that they're spawning from have, you know, blown the final amount of their load. They have no more minions to send, and they're gonna start turning into loot as this timer ticks closer to zero. That's that's just success. That's all that is, is success. Look at them get shocked. I love it. We'll watch them little, little shocky boys. There you go, see? All right, we've got some loot now. Loot's starting to fill up. Getting some good chests, getting some breach chests. Those are nice. Oil, oil chests are gonna need some, some more oils. And uh, yeah, this is your pump durability. Not that we even got to showcase it, but a boss hit will do half of this. You can take two hits from a boss, before it happens, and if a boss does hit it, they, it kills them also. That's a little fail-safe, so the boss just can't keep wailing on it. And there are some bosses that do a lot more dangerous things. Some of them leap slam, some of them uh, roll like a golem, so they can't bypass the natural lanes. But for the most part, you know, focus target your bosses, build your towers in a nice little array like this with one defensive, all offensive, and then like a buff tower. You could build better towers if you want. Shock towers are kind of cool looking, but they're not the most effective. Um, scout towers are super strong. Fire towers are really strong. The, the meteor ones do a ton of single target. Ice bolt towers are pretty crazy. Now you can see when I hold tab that there's some grayed out dots and then there's some yellow dots. Yellow dots means there's still mobs in that lane. All the grayed out dots, like this entire side, that's all dead lane. So I can just go over here and find the last of the remaining boys. I'll show up right on the main map. There they are. Here they are. Bam, one hit and we're good. Fungal growth complete. So now we could loot, we could have fun. That's all cool. But right next to Cassia is the pump. Now this is where the loot comes out of. If you hear a unique drop, you'll see the mini map. 
No unique. No unique. Boom. Two uniques. Okay. So, the, what, the any of these uniques, these this is where blight uniques drop from. You're talking breast dealers. You're talking stampede boots. You're talking uh, spore guard chest. The drop rate for a blight unique. <laughs> I'm just throwing ballparks out there. I'm estimating it's about 1 in 30 to 1 in 40 drop rate. Now, you can go on hot streaks, you can go on dry streaks. I've gone on hot streaks where I've gotten like seven stampedes within 50 maps, and I've also, I've had currently, as of right now, I'm a little over 300 maps dry of a Blight Unique. People have gone very dry on Blight maps. So, uh, well, let's see if we got a Blight Unique. Could be. Well, nope. Primordial, nope. All right, no, no Blight Uniques. All right, unfortunate. So, all this loot is directly contributed to the quantity on the map we added. Now, this was a, a shit tier map, so we didn't get any real crazy loot, and a lot of rares are showing that's not filtered out. But uh, you do it on red tier maps, you can start getting actual map drops, you can get some rogue markers, you can get some nicer things. But now I go around the entire map and there's a lot of loot to loot. Even at yellow maps, you can still get good things, you can still get entire breach stones to drop, you can still get scarabs. So there's a lot of good rewards to go around. I'm going to loot all this shit and see if I get anything worthwhile. To recap, that was my uh, bladed silo map. I uh, have my ring enchants on, I had the map anointed. This is the loot I got, it's pretty standard fare for like a mid tier blight map, whatever, nothing crazy. Um, did I get any uh, unveils? That's the question for trigger. I did not. Double damages. Sure. No trigger. And no trigger. Sad. But yeah, that's how I run my blight maps. They take, you know, from start to finish, I guess, seven minutes, five minutes, because then set up and looting. You get you a lot in general in Ritual League. You get a lot in Path of Exile. And they all are pretty fucking sweet. So, blight maps. Definitely a really cool thing to do. Uh, great loot. And that's how I run them. So I'm not Letty, and I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.